It's Earth Week, and all week ABC News is looking at the power of water, and that power is arguably nowhere better represented than America's Great Lakes. Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, and Lake Ontario provide about 20% of the world's fresh water, but the Great Lakes are also under threat by plastic pollution. In Lake Erie alone, multiple studies have shown that the amount of plastic waste now rivals that of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, an accumulation of trash in the ocean that's twice the size of Texas. Brad Milkey is the host of ABC Start Here podcast, and he so graciously joins me now. Brad, you went to Erie, Pennsylvania and got a trash tour. That's right. Tell well, us about it. I, I know when you go to like yeah. a lake vacation, the first thing you want to do is go on a trash tour. Well, that's what I did. Okay. I, I went around uh, Erie, Pennsylvania with Sherry Mason. She is uh, the director of sustainability for Penn State University's campus there at Lake Erie. And she basically took me around to understand what is happening in the lake right now and just how much trash there is floating around. Now, the weird thing is, when you look at the trash, or when you look at the lake, and you know, you just said that out there right now are concentrations of plastic that are just as big in some cases as the famous Great Pacific Garbage Patch where there's just you know, miles and miles of, of plastic floating around. But you go out there, you don't see any trash. You scoop up the water, you don't really see any. And that's because it's gotten to this microscopic level. That's why we spend a lot of the day talking about microplastics, where plastic just breaks down smaller and smaller until you can't even see it anymore. But it's creating this invisible pollution problem throughout a lot of the Great Lakes. Because remember, we think of lakes as kind of just like closed systems. Well, no, Lake Erie feeds into Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario feeds into the North Atlantic Ocean, which then feeds into all the world's oceans. So this really becomes a global issue. Just incredible. and. Part of the problem, as you mentioned, is how tiny this plastic becomes, and you mentioned it's microplastic. But did I get this right? It's the World Wildlife Fund study estimates that the average person ingests about a credit card worth of plastic. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't sound too good. Well, no, and, and it goes back to you and I don't notice this, right? It's not as if you and I are carving up our credit cards every week with a knife and fork and choking them <laughs> down. But that's essentially how much plastic we're ingesting every single week because, and this was part of our trash tour, right? We took a look at how plastic, uh, how, how plastic's lives is affected. So you take your water bottle, right, that you and I drink out of all the time. Um, First of all, we checked out the street sweepers. They're depositing trash all day. And a lot of them, you know, these are full plastic water bottles. Next, though, you know, the street sweepers don't pick up everything. You go to a local storm grate, and there a water bottle has been filtered out. It's sitting there. Luckily, you know, maybe it'll get caught by the next street sweeper. But while it's sitting there, the sun is shining on it, right? It's getting more and more brittle. Eventually, a car is going to drive over it, and that bottle is going to splinter. That's what happens with plastic, is this is the, the first step where it starts getting smaller than what it was originally used for. And so what happens now is it goes through the storm grate. So Sherry and I went out to this litter boom where it filters out litter right before it gets over into the Great Lake. But even there, you know, some plastic sinks, some plastic gets washed over, and you can see it getting smaller and smaller, to where it's starting to become anonymous. And that's where these things truly become microplastic. You can't even tell what this used to be. Is that the top of a plastic water bottle? Is that a plastic Easter egg? What is that thing? Eventually, once it gets out onto Lake Erie, the sun is making things more brittle. Water is pounding it against the, you know, these, these are the same lakes that turn stone into sand, right? So I, that, that's essentially what is happening to plastic. And while a paper bag looks just as gross as a plastic bag when it's sitting there out in the water, a paper bag basically breaks down to the elements that the earth can continue to use within a couple weeks. So within a couple weeks out on Lake Erie, Whatever, it's, it's not terrible. Plastic bag will last for decades or even centuries. And so that's the thing, you might not even see these pieces there anymore, but they are there and they will continue to be there for a long, long time. So these small changes that we're making, like going from a plastic bag to a paper bag, perhaps even paper straws, they are making a difference then? Well, in terms of the, the changes that we're making? Mm -hmm. I mean, th the thing is that we haven't really seen that many changes recently because we are continuing to see these pieces get smaller and smaller to the point where, and I say microplastics, in some cases, these are millimeters wide. In some cases, these are nanometers wide. There are plastics right now as they continue to break down, because again, it doesn't go anywhere, that get smaller and smaller to the point where they are the width of a human hair. Once you get smaller than that, that is smaller, that's smaller than the pores in our skin. That's smaller than some of the parts of our body. So now you've got pieces of plastic making their way around inside our body. And that's why it's so concerning that we're having this much plastic uh, sort of all around us in the environment. And, and Sherry found that most of the plastic waste that she collected came from food products. Um, and so 
she placed the blame not on the consumers, but also the companies who sold the, the products. Yeah, let's talk about the companies for a second, because we, we reached out to the Plastic Industry Association, which rep represents a lot of plastic makers, and they mm -hmm. said, listen, our products are incredibly safe, right? And, and that's, in fact, why you see so many plastic materials used in the medical field, because they are hygienic, um, which is true. Sherry would say that for that first use, their single use, yes, they are hygienic. It's after that that they become a real problem to, to the rest of us in, in, in our environments. Um, and meanwhile, as we talk about microplastics, the industry would also say, listen, the, the data we've got on microplastics isn't that, we don't have so much data that we're able to tell what these tiny pieces of plastic will do to our body throughout their lives. But what Sherry has said is that, you know, you look around at all the costs that we spend when we are trying to filter this stuff out of our system, right? We talked about the street sweepers. Mm -hmm. Taxpayers pay for that, you and I, right? We talk about the storm grates and the management of those. Taxpayers pay for that. The litter booms that are filtering this out, that's all you and me. The, 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 the health costs down the road, that's you and me. She would say companies, plastic producing companies should be more on the hook for that so that they are bearing some of this great, great cost, this almost invisible cost that a lot of us bear. It's so fascinating. Thank you, Brad. We appreciate you breaking that down for us. Thanks. And you can hear Brad dive into more stories like this on the Start Here podcast. New episodes drop every weekday morning at 6 Eastern, wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.